Welcome to The Place Church. We're so glad you chose to join us and worship with us in your home today, that special place to be. Today we celebrate and acknowledge this is the first Sunday of Advent, a season of spiritual preparation for the coming of Christ. May you find hope, love, joy, and peace in this season. O oh Lord, open the heavens and come down to make your name known. We long to be your people, a people of hope. So sit back, relax, open your hearts with hope, praise, and thanksgiving. The place. It's such an honor and a privilege to be here with you, and I just want to thank all of you that volunteered to pass out turkeys and bless other people because we are called, empowered, challenged to bless others. And in this season of Advent where we are preparing ourselves for the return of Christ, we also need to have the love of Christ for all other people. But today we have a special, special treat. Today we have, I like to say a young man, but he's rich in wisdom, rich in love, and a pastor, a bishop, and friend of the church family, Arnetta's father, Bishop Derwood Merrill, is here today to share with us. Bishop Merrill studied at Shaw University and has psychology, so he understands people. Love, because he's called by God. He's a father, not only a biological father, a spiritual father for many people. He's a friend, one that will lend an ear and share with you to help you through your difficult times. And a preacher of the gospel that believes in the living God, moving and empowering us to be transformed. So prepare yourself today for Bishop Merrill, a friend, an amazing man, founder of, of his own ministry called uh, Anderson Tabernacle Church, where he was the founding pastor and still pastor, but also bishop. And, and I want you to know and, and get yourself ready. For those of you out there, get yourself ready. Prepare for Advent and prepare for this word. Prepare for the bishop. God bless you, the Place Church. We love you. Father God, we welcome the Holy Spirit in our midst this morning. We welcome you. We need it. Cast not away your presence from us.
we'd like to invite you to participate in our offering here at the Place Church. This is an awesome time of the service where you can open yourselves up to pour out and pour into others what God has bestowed upon you. There are three ways to worship here at the Place Church. By mail to Post Office Box 217276, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28221 or by text to 84321, enter the place church and follow the prompts, or visit our website at www.theplaceumc.org for additional information. Let us pray at this time. Oh Lord, we give thanks to you for the blessings and gifts you have bestowed upon us. Now we take this time to give back through the love you've shown us. We ask that you bless these offerings so that they may empower our ministry and love for others. God, we give you so much thanks and praise for all that you've given us and which we now give back to you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. This gift that I have you gave to me This talent And what I'm gonna have you gave to me It's your word I heed If I do the thing that's right if I be pleasing in your sight, oh, I want to make you proud of me. This love that I have, you gave to me. This joy inside And the peace that I feel It's so real I just can't hide With a smile upon my face I'll tell the whole human race How I'm going 
gonna help my fellow men I'm gonna do just what I can I'm gonna spread your love throughout the land in season and I Some soul will be my reason. Then I know you will be proud of me. I'm gonna help my fellow man. I'm gonna help my fellow man. I'm gonna do just what I can. I'm gonna spread your love throughout the land in season and out of season. If I don't help but one soul, it'll be my reason. Then I know you will be proud. To Pastor arriving, the First Lady, to the deacons and the friends, and with respect to the clergy, to my son and the entire musical staff, to my daughter-in-law, to my, all my grandchildren, the family, and the great-grandson of uh, just you newly born. I'm probably grateful today for the invitation to worship with you once more here at the place. I was here last year about this time and enjoyed the fellowship and I appreciate the invitation to return. Pastor Robin is a great shepherd and he is a preacher's friend and I like to wish each and every one of you a very, very, very happy Thanksgiving. I'm grateful today again to be here in your presence. It's a joy just to be here with you. To the Word of God today, I'd like to direct your attention to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 and verse 5. If you have your Bible, you can turn to that reference. If you have your telephone, you can follow our guides. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the wound, I sanctify thee. I ordain thee a prophet unto the nation. A few Sundays ago, I spoke from the subject, accept God's invitation. And uh, having accepted his invitation, it brings us to the point of our subject for this morning. We have a divine assignment. God saved us for anything. He saved us for service. God never once intended for us to be a human reservoir or silo of blessing, but he blesses us in abundance that we may be a blessing to someone else. God called, God convicts, and God saves us for his faithful service to him. And then when he has done that, he gives us a divine assignment. In St. Matthew chapter 20 and verse 4, Jesus says, Go into the vineyard, 
and work and whatsoever is right, I will pay. I was speaking to my daughter this morning and I was telling her how good God is. I said, he's a good paymaster. And so he says, whatever is right, I will pay. He tells Peter in St. Luke chapter 22 and verse 32, he says, Peter, when you have been converted, strengthen the brethren. Now here in our text today, Jeremiah sanctified, ordained, and given him an, a divine, divine assignment. This is what God did for Jeremiah. And this is what he says. He says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I knew you even before you were born, and I, I sanctified you while you were still in the belly, and I ordained you before you came forth out of the wounds. And though throughout the biblical pages of history, we find that Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. He just cried and he wept for the sins of his people. And uh, so one might ask the question, why was he known as the weeping prophet? It's simply because he grieved and he wept because of the, the constant uh, sinning and backsliding condition of Judah. His message, Jeremiah's message was often gloomy in nature and, and it, was, it was always about the judgment of God. One thing we must know about God, before God sends judgment, he always sends a warning. And when God speaks, sent, Judah, just sent him to Judah with a message of his judgment, the people of Judah rejected him and continued to sin. Every time we sin, we break the heart of God. So it broke Jeremiah's heart just to tell the people what God was going to do and what was going to happen to them. And when he gave them the message, they rejected and Jeremiah cried. In chapter 9 and verse 1, uh, we find that his grief was so great, he wrote this. You might want to turn to that for reference. He said, oh, if my head were water and my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night for the slain of my people. Judah rejected the message of God's judgment. And every time you reject God's judgment, something evil comes upon you. So Judah rejected the message of God's judgment and the kingdom eventually was conquered by the enemy and the people were led away in captivity. God's message, he wanted them to know, though you've sinned, I, I still love you. And God is saying the same thing to you, us. Though our sin be a scholar, they can be white as snow. If you just repent, return to me, and I'll return to you. So his message to Judah was said, I love you in spite of your sin. Just return to me. And they would deliver them out of bondage. Just, just know that I love you and return to me. I'm going to make a way for you. He says to Jeremiah this, there's some things about this assignment, Jeremiah, that I want you to remember. And there are things about God's assignment for our lives because God has a purpose for our lives and it's something about our lives that God wants us to never forget. So he said to Jeremiah, there's something about this assignment that I want you to always remember. Number one, first, I want you to know, and he said, I want you to know that I am the one that called you out. Now, I am the one who sanctified you. And I, I'm the one who made it possible for you. And, and he says to him, I'm the one that ordained you, and I called you to be a prophet. We don't even worry about what other people call us, but when we have the callings of God in our lives, it's, it's paramount. God says to Jeremiah, I sanctified you. And when we look at the word and we hear the words said so many times in our gathering, the word sanctify, but the word sanctify here means to be cleaned up from the filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. It's not just the physical filthiness of the flesh, but the filthiness of the spirit. We must have a wholesome spirit. And we have done that, then we are set apart for God's use. God becomes first place in our lives. But understand that anything that is set aside for God's use is sanctified. 
So God's telling Jeremiah, I sanctified you. I set you apart for my use exclusively. So he wanted Jeremiah to know this. You've got the assignment, and, and I'm the one that called you, and I set you apart, and I sanctified you, and you are to be used for my service. In the tabernacle, in, in the temple, there were, uh, may have been some old sanctified vessels that were still being used. Some may have been well used and they may have been nearly worn out. But, and, and by today's standard, they might have been good yard sale material, but, but they were still sanctified. They were still set apart for God's service. They were still holy. Amen. And, 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 and they were like some of us today and like me today. We may be old and weather beaten and broken down and nearly worn out, but we're still sanctified and we're, and we're still holy and was still set apart for God's service. Jeremiah was called by God and God sanctified him and set him apart even before he was born. And he said, God said unto him, I ordain you. I'm the one that set you apart. I called you to be a, a prophet for my nation. Don't you worry about the effects of the message. Don't worry about how the people take the message. You just give the word. And God is saying the same thing to us. I called you. I ordained you. I set you apart. Don't worry about how people look at you. Don't worry about what they have to say about you. They talked about Jesus Christ. He said, just give the word. Just give it. You know, we have a saying in our church that uh, it, it's been echoed through the years, and when we're in doubt about what we're going to do, we say, just do what he says. Whatever God put on your heart, just do it. And today, God is saying the same things in the same words to us. I've given you a divine assignment. Don't, don't you waver. Just do it. Don't worry about somebody's talking. Don't worry about Stand firm on the present, on the promises of God. He said to Jeremiah, I'm giving you power, and I'm giving you authority, and I'm giving you guidance for the dark days that lie ahead. you got to understand that God always prepares us. Amen. God prepares. God never sends a warrior into battle without preparation. So God preparing Jeremiah, I called you to be a prophet, but I want you to know I'm not sending you away. I'm sending you on the journey without the experience. I'm not sending you out on the field without preparation. But God prepared him, said, and I'm giving you authority and guidance. The days are going to be dark to lay ahead, but I want you to know that I'm with you. In verse 6, Jeremiah is almost speechless as God has talked to him. God has spoken to him. And, and we may have been like that sometime, but Jeremiah is, is, is almost speechless and he tries to respond. And if you look at that past uh, scripture in verse 6, it says, uh, I, uh, Lord, be, uh, uh, be, Behold, Lord, I, I can't speak for I am a child. That's what the scriptures say. But actually, Jeremiah was not a child. He was, he was a young man, and the theologian says he was about 20 years of age at that time. But, but what Jeremiah was saying, in effect here, is I'm just a young, inexperienced fellow. I'm not prepared, and I really don't think that I'm capable of doing the job of this magnitude. But that is a good way to feel. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? This is a good way to feel. We, we feel like we uh, got it stacked, and we feel like we know everything, and, 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 and we, we feel like we, we got on top, but this is a good way to feel it. And Jeremiah did not feel worthy. He did not feel qualified uh -huh, because the people that God uses, the one that God uses the most is those that don't think that they can do the job. God never calls the qualifies, but he calls the ones that he do call to work. He qualifies them because he calls them and qualifies them to do the job. Now, you, you, you think about that and, uh, and, and, and just ask yourself the question, can God use me? Uh, do I feel like I'm qualified? Sometimes we feel like we're qualified and God is obligated to use us, but God has to qualify us. He calls us first and then he qualifies to do the job. 
stories told of a young pastor who was green with envy over another pastor's ministry in the same town. And so he comes to an elderly pastor in that town for counsel, and he wanted to really vent his frustration. And he says to that pastor, I'm a better preacher than that pastor, and I'm a better speaker than that man, and, his mini and my ministry is falling flat. And I want to know why God is using him and why God is using that man and is not using me. I'm qualified. So you see, that young pastor thought that he was qualified and because he felt that way that God could, should use him, but God had another thing in mind. Amen. When we, we, get, we get so high, amen, God can't use us. And for example, if you remember when Zacchaeus climbed up the sycamore tree and Jesus says, in effect, you're too high, come on down, for this day I will abide in your house. Sometimes we will rise so high that God can't use us. We've got to come down at the feet of Jesus. So this young pastor thought that he was qualified and God should use him, but in the eyes of God, he really was not qualified because God himself had not qualified him to do the job. Do you think you can do the job? Do you think you can do it? That the elder pastor listened intently to the young man's frustration. And then when he finally finished his, 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 his little say, he, he, he asked him a profound question. The elderly pastor asked the young pastor a profound question. He says this, do you think you can do it? Now, apparently this young pastor thought he could do it, and because he thought he could do it, he really wasn't qualified in the eyes of God. But in order to do the job, God had to qualify him because those who he calls, he qualified. God always called the people who think, I, uh, I can't do it. I, I can't do it because, they, because when he uses those people who really feel that they can't do it, they have to totally rely on him for their strength. Amen. All our strength comes from God. Here Jeremiah felt inadequate to do the job which he was assigned. And he actually quali which actually qualified him to do the job. You understand what I'm saying? What actually qualified him to do the job that God had for him to do because he felt so humble and inadequate and he was not qualified. But that in itself was the root of his qualification. He didn't actually feel qualified to do it. So you don't have to be, you don't have to have a college Education. You don't have to have a, a college uh, degree. You don't have to be a graduate to accomplish God's divine assignment. Because when he saved us, he assigned. There's a work assigned to all of our hands. God has a purpose for our lives. God has a, a plan for our lives. And, and if we get into the perfect will of God and find that place where God has for us, then he gives us that divine assignment. God uses weak people and weak things and, and to confound the world of the body. Look at verse 7 uh -huh, and verse 8 when God answers Jeremiah. Jeremiah felt inadequate. He told the Lord that he didn't feel, I, I, I can't do it. it it's a job is, it's too big for me, Lord. I, I, I'm not capable of doing a job of this magnitude. But here's what the Lord says to him. But the Lord said unto me, this is Jeremiah, say not, say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all I sent thee, and wherever or uh, whatever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver thee, said the Lord. That's verse 6. There have been some times in my early days of my ministry when I stood before the audience to speak, and, 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 and it, I, 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 they, I, I became consciously aware of the fact uh, that people were looking strange, and the, their facial expressions became paramount, and, and the looks on some of their faces could almost sit you down, almost shut you up and sit you down quickly. But the Lord is saying to Jeremiah here, don't look at their faces. Look not at their faces. Now, don't look. Don't even worry about it. I'm with you. I'm on your side. Don't you be afraid to look into their faces. I am with you. 
the reality of this is that one with the majority is God. When you have God, you have the majority. Uh huh. One with God is the majority. Uh huh. So when you have God on your side, you have the majority. God uses people who will accept the divine assignment and will speak the word of God with power and authority. You got to understand that God gave his children authority. Amen. Uh, you remember some passage where Jesus told Peter, said, I say thou art Peter. I give you the keys to the kingdom. Keys represent authority. And God has given us authority. When he given us authority and assignment, and the Lord put forth his hand, and this is verse 9, and, and, and the Lord put forth his hand uh -huh, and touched my mouth. Here God is sealing his promise. And the Lord said to me, behold, I put my word in your mouth. There's a passage of scripture where the Lord tells his children to open my mouth, open your mouth and I'll fill it. God will fill our mouths with good things. Look at 2 Timothy, the third chapter, and verses 16 and 17. It says this, all scriptures, not some of them, but all scriptures are given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness, that a man of God may be perfected, may be perfect, thorough, finished, unto all good works. God never made a mistake. God never made any junk. If you want to be perfected, you get into the center of God's will. Now, the scripture is, is God's inspired word. Amen. This is not something, uh, we talk about the Bible being the final edition, but the scripture is God inspired word. And the word inspired means God breathed. Amen. When, we, when the prophet speaks, he speaks as an oracle of God. God speaks to the prophet. And when you hear the words that fall from the prophet, his lip, you are actually listening to the words of God speaking through the mouth of the prophet. So that word was God breathed into the prophet and the prophet spoke. Uh, when the prophet became what we might consider, if any of you know anything about utilities or when this building was constructed and when the electrical wire was inserted, it was inserted through a conduit. So we have to understand here that the prophet speaks and he becomes a conduit in which the word of God travels through. He speaks as an oracle of God. In reality, it was God speaking the inspired word, as I said, through the mouth of the prophet. God bless you, and may we be about our divine assignment. That's the message. That's the message for the day. And may you have a very, very happy Thanksgiving. You have a divine assignment. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we praise you for your manifold blessings, your goodness and kindness for us. We're grateful for our last night's sleep and our early rising this morning. God, all day long you blessed us. All night long you let us sleep. If we had not awakened this morning, we would have slept all night long in death. We thank you, Lord, we would have slept all night long in death. But you blessed us and you rose us this morning. I thank you for that today. We pray that you heal the sick and save the lost. Visit the hospitals and the institutions of suffering throughout the land. Those, God, that can't turn over for sword joints and aching muscles. Those whose fevers has gone high and whose hearts are out of rhythm. Oh God, somehow, some way we pray you visit the penal institution. Walk down the hallways and the alleyways and the corridors of those that are incarcerated. Speak to their heart, God. Send your word, God, and deliver them. And though they may be bound, God, and though they may be have chains and, and they may be in prison, but we pray, God, that you would free them after they receive your word and then they can go back to a free person into their cells. But let your word come. Let your word come and cover. For the scripture tells us that you sent your word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. I pray for this pastor. I pray for the church. I pray for this, those, God, that are, are involved, God, into this COVID-19. God, we know that you have the answer, God, but in your own time. Thank you, for the, thank you for the success of the serum and what is going to be done. 
and we praise you for what you're going to do, and we thank you, and we give you the praise, and we give you the honor. It's yours now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do just what I can. I'm going to spread your love throughout the land. In season and out of season, if I don't help but one soul, it'll be my reason. Thing I know, you will be proud.